As we start to have more complex applications and games, then we'll want to move away from using the prompt and the alerts. And we'll want to be able to uh, accept user data by using form input, as well as just writing to the document object model on our page. Um, it'll be less annoying, it'll be more efficient, and actually it'll make it easier for us to uh, call our functions. So here on this HTML page, I have a few new elements here that I haven't introduced before. And this is how we're going to accept user data and how we can trigger a function. This is easier than using the prompts to accept data. Um, in the long run, it is. So on line 13, well, first of all, let me just mention line 11. Um, I have an ID of output. And so this is where I can have the, um, the user text change um, by using a method called get element by ID. Um, I won't introduce it right away, but I can come in, uh, into that a little bit later. Uh, to begin with, I just go ahead and have my output by using alerts. I'll go ahead and continue doing that. But for my input, I'll go ahead and use a form. And so my form will be on line 13 and line 14. I don't officially have an opening and closing form tag there, but I am using um, elements that are normally used with forms. So the elements that I'm using is the input text, uh, the input for text. And so this is a way to establish um, uh, a space that users can type into a text field and then that, that, that text field information can be saved. Um, Line 13 uh, uses a type of button, and that's the input type. So there's multiple input types, and as you can see on line 12, we have the input type of text that establishes a text field. Then we also have an input type of button, and that will actually give us a button, um, and you'll, you'll recognize that right away. It'll look just like, uh, very much like every other input text field and uh, button that you'll see on the web. The value attribute here on line 13 is whatever we type in there. So if I write submit me, then that's the text that would appear on the button. If I write click me, then that would be the text that appears on the button. I have the word submit for my value, so then that's the text that will appear on that button. Notice right here, I'm gonna highlight the on click. This is a little bit tricky when you first see it. The on click is establishing what is going to happen when the user clicks on the button. And that is a HTML attribute called on click, just like value and type in that case on line 13. But on line 13 inside the quotes is actually JavaScript, all right? So when the user clicks the button, it's going to run some JavaScript. And it takes a, maybe a minute or a moment here to wrap your head around this. But it's calling the JavaScript, and there's a function in my JavaScript code that is called game. And so that is already loaded in memory, or uh, depending on your loading order, it will be loaded in, in, in memory. At any rate, when the user is accessing this page and using it, the browser, the document object model, knows that this game function exists, assuming that you wrote it in your JavaScript. So when the user clicks, then it has that memory and it can run that JavaScript function called game in this case. So my JavaScript is over here and it's just an alert. It's just a, a hello world. So I'll go ahead and show that to you. It's just function game alert hello world stored in memory. So now when the users click on that button, it will execute it. So let's save that up. Let's give it a quick, quick run. Okay, uh, let me back up here. Okay, so guess the number between one and 10. That's just the text that I have on the page, if you see that on the HTML page there. And now to actually run this, I don't have to type anything in there, but I can hit the submit button. As soon as I hit that, it runs the function. And you remember which function? Game. The function, all it does this time is just have a hello world. That's it. So back to my code. So just look that over, um, see if you have any questions about that. Um, it really helps if you just go ahead and take that code and retype it, and maybe name the function your own name, and then change the alert value. And just do that as a first step. 
And then the second step that we'll be doing is to see if we can actually have it process the data that we input into the form. And, and uh, we'll do that next.